All right, Jesus, thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for giving us a brand new day. Thank you for letting us come and gather in your presence. I'm so honored to be able to gather with the children of God, those that you've called, those that you love, that carry your name, and we get to live for you together. And so I pray, God, as we get into the word, that your word would get into us, that the Holy Spirit would begin to change our view on life, that you would begin to shift the things that need to be shifted, God, that you would begin to adjust the things that need to be adjusted, God, that we might experience you, that we might have more of you in our life, that we might taste and see that the Lord is good once again and realize that there is something far greater than the religious side of being organized and meeting together. But this supernatural connection with you and what happens when we encounter a holy God and it begins to change everything. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We do ask that you would flood this place. Change the atmosphere, God. We're asking for you to just take over our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good morning. Everybody say posture. Posture. We'll try that again. Everybody say posture. Posture. Hey, there you go. All right, sit up. Sit up straight. Let's move you back. All the way to the back of the chair. There you go. Some of y'all will help y'all out this morning. I want to talk to you about your posture today. Um, there are a couple different. Do we have the slides ready, my man? Back. Ready to move to the next one. There's a couple different ones. The first one is a position of a person's body when standing or sitting. An example, he stood in a flamboyant posture with his hands on his hips. Maybe something like this. I don't know. I don't know if flamboyant his hands on his hips. Maybe it's something like that. Then it says, number two, a particular way of dealing with or considering something, an approach or an attitude. Example, a reunion stop in a more militant posture in wage negotiations, which I'm sure wasn't fun for some people. But we want to talk about both of these, okay? And I want to address this from both a physical, emotional, and spiritual side, if that's okay. Um, on the next slide, you're going to read about poor posture. And in short, poor posture is habits over time that shape your posture, either in a good or a bad way. But Poor posture happens when you don't use your muscles correctly, when you don't align your body correctly. When you, uh, for example, how many guys work at a desk? How many of you look at a computer screen? How many of you guys have a phone? Statistically, you are more inclined to looking at a screen to do this. <laughs> yes, this. <laughs> yeah, and, and your posture gets affected, and when you do that over time, it begins to shape the way you carry yourself. And there's some really bad, you know, there's, it's not just the way you look. And I want to look at a few of these things, but there's some consequences to your posture here. On the next slide, the first one is, it can cause career problems. Slouching doesn't just hurt your attitude, it can affect how people see you. You don't want to walk into somebody's office slouching and bend over, because people really do perceive you as not as vital. And this says, this is from Janice Novak, she wrote some really cool stuff about posture. On the next slide, it says that it makes you look heavier. Oh no. <laughs> Does this chair make me look fat? Well, yes, says the back. <laughs> We've become a, a nation of professional sitters. Yes, we sit often, and with the advancement of technology, as much as it has helped us in a lot of areas, it has caused us to slow down physically. Um, and so it's affecting our posture. On the next slide, it says it can cut off your circulation. Our bodies are machines that move fluid and gases back and forth. Prolonged sitting, especially with your legs crossed, can cut off the flow, increase pressure, and even cause spider veins. Oh. <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah, you know, your body is two thirds of water. It's, fluid. it's a lot of fluid, so you know, it's important that you get up and move around. Well, what if you have a job you have to sit? Get up and move around in your job, find a way. If you like to sit down and watch Netflix all the time, get up and move around. Don't sit so much. All right? This next one, uh, deep into depression. This one's a little more serious. In a recent study from San Francisco State University, students were told to either walk down a hallway in a slouch position or to skip. The slouch was reported increased feelings of depression and lower energy than the skippers. Now, that may sound like a silly uh, study. 
in, in the example right there, but there's so much support behind this. Ultimately, your happiness, your health, your emotions, and when to see your spiritual condition all tied into your posture. It's all affected one way or another. Uh, the next one says, stresses you out. How many of you have been stressed out this week at least once? Oh, snap. Yes, a lot of us. A recent study from Harvard showed that when people who adopted powerful postures, open shoulders, straight spines, had a 20% increase in testosterone levels and a 25% decrease in cortisol levels. Look at the opposite. People who slouched had a 10% decrease in testosterone and a 15% increase in their cortisol levels. But when you think about that, that God created you exactly the way that you are. He designed your body. He was very meticulous about it. There were 50 billion cells in your body. All the things that make your body happen, the way that you can heal yourself, and all the things that God put in the thought form to create you. Your body is important. The way that you carry and conduct yourself affects everything. The last one here says increases risk of death and disease. A recent Australian study found that after the age of 25, Raise your hand if you're 25 or older. Okay. Some of y'all raise your hand like this, you're like, <laughs> it's cool, I see. Every single hour of television, slouching on the couch, reduced the viewer's life expectancy by 21.8 minutes. Ouch. Some of y'all need to stop watching. Some of y'all like, I just lost like a year of my life last week. <laughs> That's crazy. But it's a real statistic, right? This is real reporting about what's going on. Now, the disclaimer here is I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician, right? So I'm just telling you reports. I don't know anything else except for what I research and study. So don't go home and talk about Dr. Jason said anything. <laughs> Dr. Jason I say nothing, I'm just reporting. Um, this is a really big deal. You know, you don't want to deal with this stuff. It talks a little bit about diabetes here and some other things. But your, your posture is directly connected to your health, your happiness, and your emotional condition. And so it's important for you to understand that you have to take care of your body. Now, that's not really the premise of today's message. It's just kind of like, I just want to tie that in because I really do think that it matters. I really do think that your physical condition is connected to your spiritual condition in a lot of different ways. And so maybe I helped some of you guys out with some posture stuff this morning. Maybe some of y'all need to, you know, shoulders back, set a round it out, put your head back a little bit, tighten your core, you know, work on some of your posture. That might help you a little bit. But what I'm mostly concerned about today is talking to you about your spiritual posture. I'm mostly concerned today about your spiritual posture. Proverbs chapter 2. I'm not going to read you the whole chapter because I have to be mindful of the clock over there. I would say you go home and read this whole chapter today. But in verse 1, it says, My son, do you accept my words and store up my commands with you? Make your ear attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. Furthermore, if you call out to insight and lift your voice to understanding, if you will seek it like silver, search for it like hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up success. For the upright, he is a shield for those who live with integrity, so that he may guard the paths of justice and protect the way of his loyal followers. I want to talk about your spiritual posture today, and I want to help you make some adjustments. If you have your notes in the bulletin, uh, point number one is adjust your mind. Everybody say mind. mind. Say adjust your mind. Adjust your mind. Very good. You won't change the way you think until you change the way you think. Nothing in your life will change until so your thinking changes. And unless you're willing to be intentional about the way you program your mind, nothing is going to change. People spend their whole life wishing for something different, hoping something will change. In the business world, in the relationship world, in whatever it is, the sports arena, nothing is going to shift for you until this intentionally shifts. So he says, be, have your ear attentive to wisdom. Your ear is part of your body. Everybody grab your ear. Here, just pull on a little bit. If your neighbor's sleeping, go ahead and just grab your neighbor's ear a little bit. Your ear, okay? But spiritually, it is the receiver of divine revelation. It is the symbology of how we embrace and receive from God, from the Holy Spirit. We say earlier, Holy Spirit, come flood this place. You're welcome here. 
know, and, and, and if we just stand here and just throw stuff at you all day about truth, but there's no receiver on your end to get it, then it doesn't matter. If we had walkie-talkie this morning, and I gave you a walkie-talkie, and I had my walkie-talkie, but I took the batteries out of yours, and I sent you out, and I tried to communicate with you, even though mine's functioning just fine, you're not going to get the message. You need to be able to receive what God is saying to you. Okay, so the ear, spiritually, we're talking about receiving divine revelation, and here, attentive, paying attention, listening, taking heed, to give attention to. Wisdom, shrewdness, prudence, skill in war. Um, Proverbs 9.10, and the next, actually, I don't know if I gave this slide, but Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This idea of wisdom, knowing what to do next, given an understanding of the facts and circumstances. There's a difference between knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And I hope to try to connect this for you this morning in regards to your spiritual posture. This verse is telling us to make a conscious effort to position ourselves in a way that our mind is paying exclusive attention to wisdom. Where does wisdom come from? God. Right? On the next slide, another quote that I like is having access to the very mind of God in order to address any situation in the best way possible. Wisdom, it's almost like you could go on a Google search for God's mind. That's what wisdom is. I mean, no matter what's going on in your life, you can just type it in in your relationship with God, and the very mind of God is going to give you the best answer about what's going on in your life. This is important. Um, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. It is the primary thing. It's one of the top priorities of all life. What about Solomon? He was given a choice. God said, what do you want? Have whatever you want. What did he choose? Wisdom. Wisdom. And I'm going to connect this with um, your heart here in just a moment. James 3.17 says that the wisdom from above is first pure and then peace loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits without favoritism and hypocrisy. We're not talking about gaining the knowledge of smart people on planet Earth. And there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. You know, we want to learn, we want to grow, okay? we want to you know, have as much knowledge as we can, but this is very different. Okay? The wisdom that God offers is the ability to be able to assess situations, make decisions that will lead to the most God-glorifying outcome in every scenario. Proverbs 4, 7. Proverbs 4, 7 says, the beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. With all you're acquiring, you get understanding. A lot of people think they're smart. A lot of people think that they have wisdom. They think they're wise. The Bible tells us right that the very beginning of wisdom is the acquisition of it, the pursuit of knowing him, the pursuit of wanting to know who God is and what he has to bring to the table. Are you in a place in your life where you are acquiring wisdom? You know, it's challenging when you've been in church for a long time, isn't it? If you're a church person, go ahead and do this. Yes, because you've been to the small groups, and you've been to Sunday, and you've heard the different messages, and and you've learned the Bible stories, and so you can say that I think I have a certain amount of knowledge. And you can get to a place where you stop pursuing God's voice. Because you think you have enough knowledge in your knowledge bank. That's a dangerous place to be. And so we're talking about spiritual posture, and point number one is to you know, adjust your mind. We're talking about intentionally getting to the place where you're giving God your ear priority, in, in, a, in a matter of priority first before anything else when it comes to everything else. Like, yeah, you want your friends input. You want your family's input. You want other people's advice. We do it all the time, right? The Bible says that there's safety in a multitude of counsel. We want people's spiritual counsel. You need to adjust your posture so that, first and foremost, in a matter of priority, that God is the one that has your ear to speak into your situations. 
what's going on. That doesn't happen by accident. You have to be intentional. Everybody say intentional. intentional. One more time, intentional. <laughs> Some of y'all gonna be mad at me today for making you talk. I don't care. Intentional. You have to be intentional about doing this. You can't just wake up every day and go through your life and be like, I didn't get wisdom. Yeah, of course you did it. If we do it with everything else in life, you have to get gas in your car. You don't just wake up and hope that there's gas in your tank. You go to the gas station. You know you need groceries. You don't just wake up and hope that groceries arrive in your refrigerator magically. You have to go to the store and get it. We do this with everything else, but with God, we for some reason get to this place where we think, I don't need to keep pursuing wisdom anymore. The very beginning of it is the acquisition, pursuit, getting God's ear. All right, point number two, adjust your heart. Everybody say heart. Heart. Say adjust your heart. Adjust your heart. Very good, very good. Incline your heart to understanding. In verse 2, we were reading, incline means to stretch out, extend, offer, to turn aside, thrust aside, or influence. Your heart is the seed of your appetite, the seed of emotions and passions, the seed of courage, moral character, and conscience. And this word here, understanding, is where we're going to spend some time with this morning. Insight, the object of knowledge, the faculty of understanding. On the next slide, you're going to see a little thing here. It says the ability to translate meaning from the facts. One of the differences between wisdom and understanding is that understanding is this ability to look at the actual facts, the information, and translate what it means. This is important because a lot of people don't do this well. A lot of people don't do this well. What happens is people look at the facts, and then Satan comes over and whispers and says, this is what it means. And you say, oh, okay, thanks. I'm a loser. Thanks. And you listen to it, right? Let me give you an example. Divorce happens in the family. Hurts everybody, it's a difficult thing to go through. Everyone's affected in one way or another. The fact is divorce happened, that's a fact. What the meaning is behind that is very different depending on who you are in that story. If you're a child affected by that story, often you can tell yourself it's my fault. I, if I'd have just done better, right? Maybe if daddy would love me, he would have stuck around. Or, you know, if I wouldn't have done this, maybe mommy wouldn't have left, right? And you, you start defining and telling yourself a story about something that's not really true. Right? Or you go, you go to get a job, and you get rejected from the job, and you start telling yourself, man, I'm just not good enough, and maybe if I would have done this, maybe I would have done that. Instead of listening to the voice of God, instead of having understanding and being able to translate the meaning from the facts, you get lost in your emotional shuffle, you get lost in the circumstances and the spiritual warfare side of it, and you listen to what Satan has to offer on that matter. I'm not good enough. I just keep getting rejected. Nobody likes me. I'm not going to be a success. I'm just going to have to settle. Understanding allows you to translate the meaning from what's going on. Where do you get that? Where do you get the definition? Everything is circumstantial. Everything is situational. So how do you know the meaning? The voice of God. The voice of God. Sometimes you can get rejected because it is your fault, and God's trying to help you get your life together. Sometimes you can get rejected because God's trying to shut the door because he has a better one he wants to open for you. And it's totally different circumstances. How do you know? The voice of God. If you don't get your heart into a place where you're intentionally positioning it so you get understanding from God, you get lost in this mess. People have all kinds of conflicts relationally because of this all the time. You know, the insecurities get in the way, they start taking text messages the wrong way, they start taking emails the wrong way, they start having bitterness in their heart towards people because of something that's not even real. Right? They, they have all this conflict for no reason to say this is on the side last and say. <laughs> I got you right where I want you. So we need to make some adjustments. We need to make our heart attentive to understand it. Um, on the next slide, you see some verses. I want to read Psalm 119, 130. It says, The revelation of your words brings light and gives understanding to the inexperienced. Listen to this. Listen to the power here. The revelation of your words brings light and gives understanding to the inexperienced. What does this mean? 
It means that if you don't have a PhD in whatever category you need it in, the Holy Spirit has all the PhD you need. What that means is if you've never walked down this road before, you don't have to worry as long as you're making these adjustments because when you make your heart attentive to the wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit now has the ability to speak to you and say, you should take a left turn right here. Trust me. You should say no to that. Trust me. This is powerful. Think about it. We go to school, we get all this education, and we uh, hope to get a good job and pay off all the student loans and be able to have everything that we need to be successful and to give our families the best opportunity possible. We're hoping that all this knowledge we acquire is going to shine enough light in front of us to give us a path to walk down to, to provide for our life. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it becomes a problem when that gets in front of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can take somebody who knows nothing about anything and give them this most amazing, successful life because they position their mind and their heart to be attentive to wisdom. And you could be the smartest person with the most degrees and have nothing. Be empty and lost, confused. The revelation of your word brings light and gives understanding to inexperience. On the next slide here, it says wisdom plus understanding equals a supernatural life. When you position your mind to understanding and, and position your heart and make it attentive to God's wisdom. When you connect these two together, you get this supernatural life. Look at Joseph. Joseph went through all kinds of mess. This dude did nothing wrong. His brothers hated on him. Was going to kill him. Then he threw him in a pit. Then he sold him into slavery. And then he, you know, in, in slavery he rose up and then he got lied on and put back in prison. And then he came back out and he ended up becoming the second in, in command over the world pretty much at that time and spared all of Israel. But look at the way it happened for him. Connect the dots here. Here he is going through all kinds of drama for no reason, but every single time, because he's inclined his heart to God, he's opened his ear to be getting filled with the Spirit of God to listen to what God is saying to him. God gives him favor every time. Takes him higher every time. Gives him more authority every time. He ends up saving the world. Three Hebrew boys, same thing, dealing with teenagers, ripped from their homes, ripped from their families, ripped from their cultures, pulled away from everything that they knew. They were given new names, new identities, taught new languages, totally tried to transform their life from a God-fearing life into a pagan culture. But because they inclined their heart to God and they, they, they listened to the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, what happened to them? It says that they were ten times smarter than everybody in the kingdom. As teenagers, how does that happen? Do you want to live a supernatural life? Listen, if you're tired of coming here, is this is this my chain? Is this my I'm sorry, I am just my bad, my bad. Come on. If you're tired of coming here and just having a Sunday church experience, do you want more? There's more for you. There's more for you, but nobody can go into your heart and your mind and make you. Be attentive to God. Nobody can make those adjustments in your life except for you. But I'm telling you, the moment that you do, the floodgates of heaven are going to open up and rush to your life and take you from where you are right now to a place you can never imagine. There's obstacles in your life right now that may seem like a big deal, but they're really nothing. When you start to let the voice of God speak to you and navigate you through those things, Look at Nehemiah. If you know the story of Nehemiah, have no fear. I'm going to start teaching through Nehemiah next month. If you don't know the story, say no to that. But Nehemiah was this guy who was a cupbearer to the king. You know what a cupbearer is? Somebody who drinks the Kool-Aid before the king does. Make sure it's not poisonous. That's his job. Drinks Kool-Aid. Long story short, this guy uses this guy who knows nothing but to drink Kool-Aid to rebuild the walls that were destroyed and to bring community and society, and, and God's people back together against all odds, in record time, and did crazy things with his life. 
He was a cupbearer. How did he know all the architectural structure stuff he knew? How did he know? How did he know all the leadership stuff? How did he know? How did he know all the relational drama? How did he know? It's like you read in Psalm 119, 130. His words, they give light, and they give light, they give you insight, things that you didn't know before. One of those supernatural lights start being intentional about your heart. We'll talk about your heart. So see your emotions. See your passion. See your appetite. Think about these things. Your heart, where are your passions? Right now. Some of you, right now, you're sitting here, but your passion is somewhere else. You're sitting here this morning, but your passion is somewhere else. And the Holy Spirit's trying to knock on your heart's door this morning and say, I want your passion. Bring it back to me. I want your passion. Stop giving it away to everything and everyone else. Give it back to God. Bring the seat of your passion back to Him and let Him take everything that you are and everything that you're doing and use it for something for greater glory. A supernatural life. All right. Point number three. Everybody say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Some of y'all already lost your passion this morning. I see some of y'all already, already like. <laughs> Let it go. Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance or weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we start making spiritual adjustments to our posture when we, we uh, adjust our mind, we adjust our heart, we connect it to where we start walking in this life that's supernatural. And when it happens, let me tell you something, when that happens, the Holy Spirit's able to start revealing things to you that you didn't hear before, you didn't see before, you couldn't deal with before. The Holy Spirit's going to start showing up in your life. When the Holy Spirit starts showing up in your life, you're going to be able to look at things differently. And at that point, you're going to have the opportunity to choose to let go of things that God doesn't want for you. You're going to have the opportunity to repent from sin. You're going to have the opportunity to walk away from things that are hindering you and walk into freedom. Last Sunday at the end of service, I was talking to you guys about raising your hands. Remember that? Yes, I had some of you awake still. Very good. Okay, talk about raising your hand. And we're talking about how I want you to visualize letting go of weights that you're holding on to, right? And surrender to God. I mean, who really wants to walk around with extra weight? Honestly, if you had the choice today to have a bunch of cinder blocks tied to your belt or not, who in here would choose the cinder blocks? I mean, come on. Nobody. But spiritually, we do every day. And this is important because how many of you have ever been to a chiropractor? Yes, no? Good experience? Anybody good experiences? Some of you guys have bad experience. If it's a good chiropractor, it's a good thing. They're taking your body, they're realigning everything, adjusting it so it functions properly the way it's supposed to be at your optimal level. What happens with chiropractors is not like you just show up one day and they just pop, 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 and then you're good the rest of your life. It's not how it works. What a chiropractor does is make just to your uh, your posture and this begin to fix things, but because of the way that you lived over a period of time, you have to keep going back. You have to keep going back and get small adjustments until things get fixed. And then even then, on a regular basis, you need to get adjustments to keep your body aligned properly. That's how it works. Spiritually, we ask you to do things. On Sundays, we're like, hey, in a minute, we're going to ask you to respond. And guess what? You're going to have that opportunity this morning. And we ask you to make decisions for Jesus. And we ask you to listen to the Holy Spirit say, and do something about it. Why do we do that? Because spiritually, you need to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to make adjustments in your life. You're not a Christian one day and everything's fixed. Guess what? You're going to wake up tomorrow and pick some sin up on your feet as you walk through this dirty life that we live. And you need the Holy Spirit to make some adjustments in your life. That's called being human. And people sit in church and they're like, oh man, it's invitation time. I don't want to come down to the morning. I don't want people to think there's something wrong with me. I, don't, I went down two weeks ago. I don't want to do that. You sin every day. You're in a war. And Satan is trying to attack you every day. And God is saying, I want you to have a life abundantly. 
But the way to have life abundantly is to position your mind and your heart attentive to the wisdom and understanding of God so you can hear the voice of God and then make good decisions. And a good decision is to let go of things that don't belong. Does that make sense? If some of you are carrying things you don't need to be carrying. Right? Busyness, sin, just extra stuff, stressing you out, worry. It's not what God wants you to have. God wants you to be a world changer. We all be here just being a little pigeon, walking around. God's saying, go fly with the eagles, but you're just a little pigeon, picking up crumbs. God's saying, I don't want that for you. But he can't make you let go of things. He's giving you the free will to choose. So I'll say, just let it go. Let it go. I don't know what it is for, just let it go. Just let go of it. Stop saying, yeah, but Pastor Jay's did. Just let it go. If the Holy Spirit's telling you let it go, let it go. He knows better. Everybody say let it go. Yeah. Alright, point number four, pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody say pick it up. Yeah. Say, we just told me let it go. <laughs> pick it up. Alright, so we're talking about something else here. Philippians 3. I'm going to try to get through this real fast because my time is gone. Philippians 3, starting verse 12. Not that I've already attained it or have already become perfect, but I'm pressing on so that I may lay hold of that which I was also laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize and the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we're talking about pressing on. Everybody say, press on. Um, when you get to this place and you adjust your heart, you adjust your mind, you start living a supernatural life, you can hear the voice of God in your life, you start making good decisions, you can let go of what doesn't belong in your life, and you begin to love this freedom that God gives you. You can start running, you can start pressing on, you can start picking up the call of God in your life. God has a call and a destiny for you. It doesn't matter if you're 13 this morning or if you're 83, God has a purpose for your life, there's a call on your life. He created you with destiny, and written all over you because you're in his image. And the thing is, is that you can live your whole life and miss it because you carry all this stuff that's unnecessary. You haven't made spiritual adjustments to your posture with God. You're not hearing the voice of God. You're not getting wisdom about circumstances. And you're letting life happen to you instead of being in dominion like God's called you to. And God is saying for you to pick it up this morning. He wants you to grab a hold of it, and he wants you to take authority over this world. God has given us dominion. And we walk around like Hebrew slaves, letting the world beat us up. God wants you to have dominion. He wants you to pick up the call of God in your life. He wants you to grab a hold of those spiritual things that God wants to give you. Let me tell you, spiritual things, when I say that, that sounds very general because it is. There are things in your life that God wants to do and say to you and give to you and bring to you, and, and it's going to happen in different ways all the time. But if you're not in that place, you're not going to hear it. You're going to miss all of it. You're just going to exist. And then you're going to be bitter people talking about church didn't work for me, God didn't work for me, God didn't answer my prayers, I don't hear from God, I never hear the voice of God, my life's horrible, blah, blah, blah. Instead of living this incredible adventure when you're like, listening to Almighty God speaking to your life about supernatural things. That's what God wants you. You have to pick it up. You pick it up by faith. Faith is that thing that allows us to grab hold of God's promises. Faith is what allows us to grab hold of what God has to say. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You need faith. You have to trust God. This is huge. If you don't trust God, that's the end of the road for you. Do you understand that? If you don't get past this place called trust with God, nothing the Bible says matters in your life. Because if you don't trust him, then nothing's going to happen. That's the, that's the entry into the club, people. That's it. Trust. I trust you to save me. I trust that what you did on the cross matters. It's this idea of faith. If there's no trust with God, you've got nothing. So you're just going to hear rules all day. You're going to hear people here. All you hear is blah, 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 amen, have a good day. You need trust. You need this relationship. You need to pick it up. God has something incredible for you. But I can't make you do it. Nobody else can make you do it. The last point is our bodies depending on it. Point number five. Our bodies depending on it. Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, other places in the Bible talks about how we have the body of Christ. We're talking about the body this morning because you have your own body. We are part of the eighth body. Physically, spiritually, all these things are interconnected. Whenever you do something, the rest of the body is impacted. When I go and get a chiropractic adjustment, the rest of my body is happy with me and is thankful for that adjustment. Yes, it is. When I don't, my body's not as happy. Okay? Uh, when I stub my toe, my body's not happy about it. 
But I cut myself. My body's not happy about it. Does that make sense for you? Have you ever cut yourself? Have you ever stubbed your toe? You ever bumped into something, tripped and fell, got hurt somewhere? You don't realize how important your thumb is until you jack it up. You can't use it. Right? My point is, is that when you come to a place individually and you understand this, Satan wants you to say, ah, it's just me, it doesn't really matter. It's my life, my relationship with gospel doesn't matter. It's not true. It's not true. You're part of the body, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, it's true. You're part of the body, so it still affects everybody. You come to the table, having made these adjustments in your mind, you make this adjustment in your heart, you start living this supernatural life, you start letting go of these things that don't belong in your life, you start picking up the call of God in your life, and you start running in freedom and faith, fearlessly, and now you can affect the body in this amazing way. Everywhere you go, you speak in life, you're bringing change, you're bringing hope, you're encouraging people, you're representing Jesus, you're exposing people to God's incredible love, you're unleashing people in their spiritual gifts, you're a world changer, and all you did was just make some adjustments. What's the other side of that? You don't make those adjustments. You don't attend. You don't make your heart attend to the wisdom of God. You don't incline your ear to God's understanding. You don't let the Spirit of God speak to you. You don't let go of the things that you're supposed to let go of. And you don't. You don't have any freedom. You're not holding on the call of God. Your life doesn't have purpose. You're wondering what you're supposed to do, what you're, what you're here for. And you have all this stuff, and you start looking like this crippled old person walking around spiritually. And nobody wants to listen to what you have to say about God because your image of God looks crazy. Nobody wants that. Everything you do affects everybody. Everything you do affects everybody. The Holy Spirit wants to set you free. Why is this such good news? This is such good news because God's already done all the heavy lifting. Jesus died on the cross. The Holy Spirit came down and gave us the opportunity to live spirit-filled lives. He's already done all the heavy lifting. All you have to do is make some adjustments. Receive it. You have to have a spiritual ear to receive the divine revelation so that God can speak to you. When's the last time you had a God encounter that you could just tell people completely in confidence, man, God spoke to me and it was incredible. God intervened in my life this way and it was incredible. And if you have to sit there and try to jog up an old memory, you, my friend, need some adjustments because you are the old cripple, spiritually, with horrible posture, walking around like this, talking about how Jesus should change other people's lives when he doesn't even look like he's changing life. And I want to encourage you this morning, it's freedom. It's freedom. And it's something you have to do on a regular basis. So yes, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to respond. In a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to give you an opportunity to let the Holy Spirit do something in your life to adjust things. You all have different phases of life. Everybody in junior high students, High students, young adults, mature adults, people who are actively working, some who are retired, all different phases of your life. One thing you have in common is that you're breathing still, that your life's not over. God is speaking into your life this morning. So, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to make some spiritual adjustments. Just like we go back to the chiropractor often, you make these adjustments often. They have practices. You go to the chiropractor and he picks you up, and then you go home and you slouch over your computer for the next three weeks. It's not really going to help you. You might come here and hear a good message, the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you get a little bit of truth out of God's word that's going to make some sense of your life, and then you go home and you don't, you don't make these adjustments. You're not intentional about your heart and mind. God has something so much greater for you than sitting in the room for an hour and a half on Sunday have a little bit of emotional heart. God wants to radically change your life and bring you from glory to glory. God wants to have you encounter his radical love like a tidal wave. Not this existing. So I'm going to pray for you. And after I pray, the worship team is going to be up here playing something, singing something. And when they do, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. When you do, stand up, tighten your corner. But when you stand up, I'm going to ask you to respond to the Holy Spirit, not to me. Respond to the Holy Spirit. Just like when I was saying on video, Pastor Jason, a couple weeks ago, asked us to come down to the Holy Spirit for what God was saying. And she was wrestling with that idea, right? I don't want to go ask Pastor Jason to come. I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. I want you to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying in your life. 
Why do we do this? Again, every time you take an active step of obedience, it solidifies what God is doing in your life. It helps you walk towards freedom and away from slavery. And if there's things you gotta let go this morning, you gotta do it. Just what you gotta make, you gotta do it. Whatever the Holy Spirit is saying, you gotta do it. Jesus, you are amazing, and I'm so grateful this morning that I look back over the course of my life, and time after time after time, I made poor decisions, I held on to things I shouldn't have held on to, I was in sin that I shouldn't have been in, I, all of those things, and, and you loved me through it, and you helped me make those adjustments anyway, and you brought me to a place where I could once again taste and see that the Lord is good, where I could have these encounters with you that were real, Speak to me. Speak life to me. Bring life to my situations. Bring purpose and destiny to everything that I touched. And God, I pray for GC2 Church this morning. I pray for everyone who's listening to this message. That they would recognize that you are calling them to a greater level. You're asking them to come into a closer look into who you are. And maybe they've been giving their ear to gossip, and they've been giving their ear to other people, and, and, and to TV, and radio, and everything else in the world, but they haven't been giving their ear, their, the divine receiver of revelation, a priority to what you're saying. So they just miss it. I pray God that this morning they make that adjustment, be intentional. God, they had made their heart attentive, the seed of their appetite, the seed of their emotions. They haven't turned their passion back to you, God, that this morning they would get their passion back. They would submit it to you, God, that their heart would be guarded by you and your view and your love. And they would walk out of here as passionate, supernatural, world-changing people. They would let go of things that need to be let go of, and they would pick up your call in their life once again and run into the destiny you've called them to. Because God, everything we do affects everybody. So Jesus, at this time, as we respond during worship, I pray that you would adjust our hearts and that we would listen. And we would respond in obedience. Holy Spirit, drum.